Hi, Dion. Just have a uh, reading for you here by uh, Shailene Jobin and Tara Capo called To Honor the Lives of Those Taken From Us. Restoring Resurgence and Survivance Through Walking with Their Sisters. And it's an article that talks about the resilience of Indigenous women, um, basically Indigenous people. And it covers women, um, children, two-spirit people, um, residential school children, trans people. Um, and it's <clears throat> in Canada, and it's a counter to the narrative that is usually about Canada's shameful treatment and the violence, etc. So it was written around the time of, uh, of Canada's 150th uh, anniversary, and it basically became a response to draw attention to a story of strength, resilience, and resurgence. And it was sort of a grassroots response and effort that centered Indigenous lives through this project called Walking with Our Sisters, <clears throat> which is basically a memorial ceremony that honors these people through the use of mocks and tops or events. <clears throat> and it was put out as a, a call through Facebook and originally was an art installation. The idea was to represent the unfinished lives of these people through the ins installation, placing them on the floor so people could walk alongside. Uh, they had hoped to get 600 and a year later they had 1600. So it became a movement or a call to action that expanded in focus from um, understanding the installation, understanding it as an installation to understanding it as a ceremony. So it sort of flips the colonial narrative of violence and, and shame in that way as well to a more resistant or uh, resilient narrative and um, something that's more positive. So all of that was important because now um, ethics comes into place and direction and advice from elders and grandmothers was brought in and a protocol was developed. So through this process that emerged, it, it basically evolved it from an art installation to a memorial complete with ceremony. So this shifted the language as well and perspective from Western to Indigenous and now the art <clears throat> collection as well through this evolutionary process became a bundle um, or and the installation became a lodge. So this was where uh, ceremony was held. So it was really uh, a really successful um, infiltration of Indigenous worldview into the art world that showed the power of Indigenous peoples individual experiences and voices in a collective way. And um, it talks about um, the ways to understand the material and spiritual significance of this. Um, and it's sort of the important part is, it, the key to it is that understanding that the bundle is a collection of both physical and non-physical items that are um, integral to communities and it's actionable and it, so it has its own agency. and. Um, so this really fits with the theme of the project as it sort of represents the people that can't physically be there either. So this was a really transformative movement or action that redefined the installation in a Western sense of knowing, or from a Western sense of knowing. <clears throat> and it was also a place where people who were denied the chance to grieve publicly could do it, could do that, and it held a place of transformation where people could connect on a different level um, that opened a space for knowledge and education to flow. So it was a way of restoring that um, basically reconfigured how these individual situations and descriptions of Indigenous missing people were presented um, to, to people. This also recentered the focus from colonial violence to strength and resilience, renewal and healing.